listen to this, Christian. An Italian food historian just released a book that says pizza sauce was first added to pizza in America, not Italy. Bro, this is our heritage, dog. <laughs> okay. Look at that. We invented everything that's good, <laughs> fam. Wow, okay, that's news to me. Um, Italians know. are going absolutely insane, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> they are not taking this well. <laughs> okay, I mean, uh, look, it, uh, we, we're going to have to keep an eye on Italy. You, mm -hmm. who, who knows how this will affect them? Will they, will they rejoin the Axis powers yeah, again? Yeah, I don't yeah. know. They're like, you know what? <laughs> I got an idea on how we get America back. Back for this. <laughs> we don't you know. want to hear something else? Garbonara, mm -hmm. he claims it's not Italian either. Oh, this is a person. Yeah, not yeah, a this sauce. Is the food historian. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not Bobby Carbonara, who we both know. And by the way, the best Cadillac mechanic you can find. <laughs> if you got a Cadillac, okay. get your ass over to Bobby, Bobby Carbonara's in Bay Ridge. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so, okay. No, Carbonara, everyone claims, oh, it's Italian, it's heritage, it's from the north. Uh -huh. It was American servicemen, and they were getting powdered milk. And powdered eggs. Oh, and when they put the powdered eggs together with bacon, because Americans be eating bacon like crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, yes, our arteries uh, will prove that to you. So they were getting <laughs> powdered eggs. They put that with the bacon and the pasta and the water. Next thing you know, carbonara. Mm. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Boom. Italian Americans for the win. Bro, <laughs> where would y'all be without Americans Damn. speaking German? It <laughs> Italy taking another L. Damn. <laughs> Putting two L's in Italy. <laughs> in Latin America, we're going to go Italy, bro. <laughs> so, uh, amazing. Okay, good start. Hello, everybody. We have to good start. start. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Got to start on a positive note because there's going to be a lot of sad news to discuss. I don't know what you're talking Alexis. about. It's Arsenal Football Club. I've been around Madrid fans since day one. Let's talk about it. Okay. I got no idea what you're talking about with all this Arsenal. Hello, Madrid. Yeah. <laughs> you know us. We're big fans of the colonizers out here. Okay. Since day one. Yeah. You all know this. All right. Okay. We've been nothing but consistent on yeah, this yeah. program. Uh, Copa Libertadores. You should be thankful. <laughs> Liberators. <laughs> so, uh, hello. Welcome to the Cool Again. It's the Cool my name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. Another oh, I just crushed my nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's on Italy, folks. Italy got getting yeah. back. <laughs> Italy has sent his finest, <laughs> their finest to attack Alexis's nuts. How do you hurt your nuts just sitting on here the recording a podcast? Man, my, my one. <laughs> It slipped past the seam. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm what? in pain, dog. Jesus. Uh, this is the oh. first. <laughs> Uh, 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 Alexis doesn't get injured on the pitch, on the field, doing exercise. <laughs> nah, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of seated based injury. <laughs> My man's thighs attacked him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, they, oh. I'm, okay. I'm feeling a little better right now. All right, good. All right. I'm going to play this game like soccer, just limping around the rest of the podcast. Uh, do we have to? This, <laughs> do we have to? This is Alexis, uh, you know, faking an injury on the pitch. Oh, good luck in the FA Cup, Mike. <laughs> yeah, no, it's okay. not going to be pretty. It's Alexis, if he's down for more than 15 seconds, he has to get off the pitch. Otherwise, yes, he's going to yeah. have to spend two minutes off of, off of the right. field, all right? I have, to, I have to leave the podcast for the next <laughs> two minutes. He has to leave the podcast, okay? And that's, this is perfectly relevant to our guest that we have uh, today. We're going to be joined a little bit later by Ali Curtis, the Senior Vice President of MLS Next Pro. Uh, he was on a couple months ago mm -hmm. uh, uh, to tell us about MLS Next. But now, MLS Next are, is in the news a lot much more because of, uh, you know, obviously they're playing in the U.S. Open Cup. That's right. The uh, uh, and also Ali Curtis was involved in in uh, testing out the new rules and bringing mm -hmm. you know the mastermind behind the rules. Of That's right. He's bringing a sin bin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. He's throwing blue cards everywhere. Bro. <laughs> oh damn. <laughs> so, no the the rule of uh, if a player is down uh, for f fifteen seconds or longer, they have yeah. to uh, uh, get off the pitch. Just a player with a broken leg trying to get up <laughs> as fast as possible. <laughs> Otherwise, they have to be off the field for two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, MLS will be implementing 
implementing that this weekend. Uh, and, we, and so it was first initially tested in MLS Next Pro and then bringing that on board. So get and ready also, for all hell to break. Also, this, the time substitutions, you have 10 seconds to get off the pitch. Otherwise, I think the next player has to wait one minute before coming back on. We'll talk about all that with, with Ali Curtis. So he'll be, he'll be with us in just... And we're going to need a fifth and sixth official for all this, bro. <laughs> so a lot of home. <laughs> we got a lot of... <laughs> we're official. Like, we passed the referee test, bro. We, yeah. <laughs> we need people with stopwatches. <laughs> okay. Not just somebody with an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so let's get to it. Uh, Champions League. UEFA Champions League. Uh, you know, there were a couple teams that uh, involved in the, in the quarterfinals. Obviously, uh, uh, on Tuesday, we have Barcelona against PSG, Dortmund against Atletico Madrid. Not to go back, but could you imagine you're, you're in an official MLS thing and you hear this? All right, now you're allowed to go back on the pitch. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. I thought I hit snooze, ref. <laughs> Minutes up. You good. <laughs> I feel like we need an official clock for this. Dude, that's a, it's PTSD hearing that sound. Bro, you know, I'm, I like, was, oh, man, I'm was, late for something. Even I felt like I was late. <laughs> you know what I do now? I ask the, if I say it, it's going to be the woman who controls the phone. Okay. Okay. Damn, bro, you don't no, want no. your wife to find out? I, <laughs> Iris, if you go backwards. If you write the name backwards, Iris. <laughs> what a virus. Like, hey, it was good. It was good as an old some old lady from, from Inwood. Uh, <laughs> but Iris, if you will, uh, I instead of saying, yo, make me an alarm for this time, I say, set me a timer. Because oh. it's a different sound. Interesting. Oh. Sometimes the alarm, I know to hit the snooze, but that sound makes her feel like, it did a, is a fire alarm going on? <laughs> is, are my cookies done? There's a lot going on when you hear that sound. Correct, correct. All right. A uh, little life hack for you. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to help. Okay, welcome to the life hack. Cool against tech tips. <laughs> <laughs> You're the ID guy. <laughs> okay, that's what we're also, here Also, can for. we celebrate the, the Puerto Rico kit you wear right now? Oh, I don't have the uh, the letter in front of me. Yeah. But, que bonita manera. <laughs> que bonita manera. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Hummel. Uh, oh. Or is it Hummel? <laughs> okay, it's my cousin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's also the shortstop. Yeah, he's uh, the best Honda <laughs> Civic mechanic in Bay Ridge. <laughs> okay, uh, also the shortstop for the Detroit Tigers. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's great. It's very busy. <laughs> it's very, it does a lot. Uh, but shout out to Hummel because they are now the, uh, the official kit maker for... Uh, La Federación de Puerto Rico. De Puerto Rico. So this is this is for the homie Zach Valentin. Let's tag Zach Va <laughs> Zach Valentin in this. That's who, right. Who plays for for Puerto Rico. Uh, also Claudia Pagan, your co-worker at, at Morning Footy. But also uh, football is life. Played professionally in Puerto Rico. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's right. Uh, I should know his name. Cristo. Uh, Cristo Fernandez from Telaso. Cristo Fernandez. Uh, Danny Ro Danny Rojas. Anyway. Uh, so shout out to Hummel for sending uh, uh, us the kids. Alexis got his as well. He's, yeah. No. Uh, you'll see. I'm. I'm. Uh, uh, I'm Friday. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I needed a kid for tomorrow. Anyway. Champions League. <laughs> um, uh, all right. We're, let, let's just get it out of the way because yeah. I ripped a band aid off. Because yeah, they decided they're not doing it this year. I think that's probably <laughs> <laughs> they skipped it. I got. I, I gotta put. I gotta put the photo. Give a, give a shout out to poorly drawn Arsenal at can't draw Arsenal. Uh, we we see a sad Gunner Soros on screen, and uh, you know. Also, this is what it would look like if I weighed fifty more pounds and I was trying to see my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis, if, uh, <laughs> Alexis has a really thick tail uh, <laughs> behind them, you know. Hey, you already know. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't get to, you don't get to see it because he's wearing those pants. Um, yeah. But uh, look, they're out. Bayern Munich, they couldn't do it uh, in, in Munich. This is the worst part about the life I live now where I know... I'd have to talk about this game for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I'm camera. I can't say anything ridiculous. Uh, so the height, the, the slash through the Arsenal name hurts. And that's right. We saw Fat Mob is just vicious with, uh, Bro. <laughs> with this. <laughs> like, um, th this is... Okay, look. How I, did Saka get a 6.5? That was brutally... Um, brutally what is there to match. say? Look, watching the game, and we're looking at the stats here on Fat Mob, uh, pretty much... Uh, every um, um, what is it? Every uh, Bayern Munich player uh, had a, a a decent performance. I mean, I look Harry Kane got a six point eight. He was probably the 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 one player the least effective. Least effective. He, he seemed like he was almost missing. But that's also the game plan, right? Gabriel and Saliba were clearly watching out for him. Musiala moved off to the side. You got uh, Sane. Obviously, was causing issues. The part that hurts the most are players like Goretzka having a good game. You know, uh, Eric Dyer having a good game. Uh, Mazarawi having a good game. Um, these are the players. Limer, dude. Isn't he Australian? Austrian. Austrian. 
I couldn't so figure close. out. I couldn't remember where he was from. This is how I was close. The way the way like w- the British talk about Americans, like isn't he you know, American? The way like that's how we do to Australians. Yeah. Like, yo, we gotta have something we gotta, to punch down. We gotta be better than yeah. somebody. Like, give us one country to be better at. <laughs> like, yeah. Australian, they we do even hey, know league. they got the sport out there. Yeah, yeah, dog. Damn, bro. I Damn. didn't like. Well, I didn't, did all, did the prisoners strike and yeah. start playing footy? Well, let me tell you something. I for one hope the kangaroos do well. <laughs> <laughs> the club broke yeah, just playing a didgeridoo. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Eleven players show up if you play a didgeridoo. That's your my FC. Yeah, they, damn. They play that out there. The the Western Sydney Boomerangs. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we know about Australia. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, um, the Crocodile Hunters. Oh, did, how many of y'all? Did you see? Um, uh, I'll, I'll see if I can find the clip. Uh, um, uh, Eric Dyer getting interviewed, talking mm. uh, about <laughs> how sweet it was to not get. Out Arsenal. Well, can I tell you what else he knocked out? He knocked out the fifth place in the coefficient to get in Champions League. Which who's that right now? Tottenham. Tottenham. <laughs> Harry Kane and Eric Dyer by beating Arsenal have knocked Tottenham out of the Champions League. That's hilarious. Uh, so who'd you really hurt, <laughs> Eric? Uh, if that's your real name, <laughs> what are you Australian? <laughs> <laughs> he was. I've never seen Eric Dyer that giddy in my life. I've never life. seen him smile. <laughs> he was, the two most boring men in football <laughs> have joined Bayern Munich from England. I think it was. Uh, who was it? Uh, it was uh, Fabrizio that uh, retweeted. I'll find. I'll find the clip in a second. But yeah, look, this was a game where uh, they truly uh, uh, Bayern Munich. This might have been their best game of the season. Even better than the yeah, of th- than the game at, at the Emirates. Well, I think a lot of people were were thinking, oh, Bayern sucked this year. Dude, they they would have won the Bundesliga for the 12th time in a row mm-hmm. if it wasn't for the team above them being perfect. <laughs> right, right, right. Literally perfect. <laughs> they have not lost Haven't yet. Haven't lost anywhere. <laughs> These guys are taking W's everywhere they go. So the bar is quite high. Uh, it really just means you cannot oh, lose even one game. Like uh, a five-year-old at a bar. It's quite <laughs> high. Uh, but look, this is, uh, I just want to play this so we can see uh, uh, Eric Dyer. And the build up about it, but the fact that it was, it was Arsenal as well in this fixture, was that kind of any added motivation on the pitch tonight? <laughs> yeah, it was nice. Yeah, yeah it was nice. Um, yeah, it was nice. Um, yeah, it's nice, nice, nice to, nice to knock them out, to be honest. Okay. Was it nice? <laughs> was, it, was it nice? <laughs> My man, how many? Was this the remix? <laughs> <laughs> he said it was nice about 4,000 times in that 19 hey, second clip. Yeah. Hey, hey, he sounds like a guy who just got his first blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, nice, nice. That was, yeah, yeah. It's literally, nice, that was nice. You know, man. it's like, you know, nice. it feels like a how bag. How nice of you. <laughs> like, it feels like a bag of sand, yeah. you know, from a 40 year old virgin. <laughs> it's really. Uh, no, so they, look, Eric Dyer played well. Um, look, the, 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 the goal where uh, 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 Joshua K- uh, Kimmich scores, and it's it's really just a, you know, nobody closing down. I, I, it seemed like a little bit of exhaustion defensively in it that was one people, moment. Uh, like uh, um, Nico mentioned it, that he came, it was Martinelli's inability to to stop him. I don't think that was Martinelli's responsibility because to me, it did, the run came from originally where Martinelli was standing, but really it's, to me, Declan Rice who... I think is a great player. I think he had a great game. But in that moment, he checks back, sees Kimmich coming, and then doesn't really move. Yeah, He I, doesn't offer I, a, any stopgap. I thought you know? it was a little bit of just ball watching yeah. on everybody. I thought so, too. Yeah, yeah Just that one moment where everybody's looking about, looking where is this cross coming from. But uh, where did it come from? It came from essentially a broken down play yeah, and then yeah, a parry. Yeah. And once those broken down plays happen, that's where you need, you, need, you need that discipline to get back in position. And you saw Arsenal... I don't want to say scrambling because it wasn't a scramble, but it was closer to a scramble than it was yeah. the opposite. It, w- it was just nobody looking to see if there were any Bayern players around in the box. And by oh, so Martinelli look out for Kim, is the responsible, shortest guy on the but, pitch. But, but <laughs> like, to, uh, oh, was it Tomiyasu's? He's looking at his man. Yeah. Uh, um, it's, uh, so look at your man. Look at bro. your man. He needs deep there in it. He needs in his attention. Eyes. <laughs> okay. but, Yo, hug your man. So. <laughs> okay. uh, so, but that's kind of what I saw. Just uh, everybody at, in that moment, just being like, "Let let me catch your breath right here. Let's yeah. see what's about to happen." It's exactly. It was a. I think we got this, and then yeah. all of a sudden and you then, don't. And, so, and those are the fine margins. I said this on the show. 
this morning. Arsenal, as much as we've made progress, as much as Arsenal looked better than they did last year, it's very clear that there isn't a focal point game breaker. If you look at a club like Chelsea, we were talking about Chelsea. Bro, you know you get the ball in a Cole Palmer's feet. He's going to do something. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You know he's going to do something. Uh, if you look at... Uh, Teams like Manchester City, you've got four, five, maybe eleven game breakers. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you look at most of the clubs out in this cut left in this competition, outside of maybe a Dortmund, I think Dortmund and Arsenal are probably even on the side of when it comes to having game breakers. It's more of a discipline or a unit based or a style or a tactics. And in competitions like this, you cannot solely lean on tactics. You need is where, where the margins are so small, where the where the clubs are, the level of the clubs are so even. And you know, we're talking about champions playing champions, player clubs that are winning at the highest level that have managed to find ways to recruit and develop and and have tactics that make you the best in your in your league or in your division. When you get to something like this, where you're playing a foe you don't see very often. And maybe they've had a little bit of extra time to study than your average weekly opponent. You, the margins to win are so small. And typically it comes down to having one little bit of individual brilliance. And unfortunately, Arsenal, the player that I would have probably picked to have that moment is Bukayo Saka. And he had quite possibly one of the worst matches I've ever seen him have in his career. Yeah, I, I, and I, I would agree. But I thought everybody up front was miserable. I thought they were all bad. Nobody uh, could figure anything out. Um you know, you, you may, maybe the, the point you're making about like uh, how, like, sort of tactically, it may not. Um, you know, you don't. That's not always the thing that wins you games, or what. You know, just like having. And you a, know me, I'm a big tactics guy. Sure, you're a big tactics guy. Yeah, okay? the, I hate the, small tactics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the small yeah, tactics yeah. people. Yeah. Not a fan yeah. of those people. No. <laughs> but the you know uh, Jude Bellingham uh, was on. Uh, he was talking to Rio Ferdinand uh, after the game on like TNT Sport I think that's or whatever. TNT, yeah. And he was, uh, the, you know, Rio Ferdinand asked him about, you know, what, what makes his team so special? He said that, and what makes Carlos so special? He basically says, like, he, he gives us a lot of, of the freedom uh, uh, to kind of figure things out on our own and, and, you know, play kind of our individual games and stuff like that. He made a, he made a joke about uh, when, when he was walking out uh, to the pitch, uh, he, he saw Carlo Ancelotti yawning. And he asked him, he's like, oh, what, what, uh, he's like, Gav, you, you tired? And he's like, uh, yeah, you guys going to have to impress me today. Uh, and and, and there's, nice. <laughs> there's something. Then he's he just raises the, his eyebrow. <laughs> yeah. He's just the coolest human the, being and, at all times. And it, it, it shows that, like, the, you know, the, that, you know, like, it's not about one style being better over the other. But there's something to be said when you look at this Arsenal team that there wasn't any any moment where you felt like some player being like, yo, I got this. I'm going to do well, this. Well, think about this, right? Like, it's 80th minute. Uh, I think uh, that's right around the time um, they made one last sub, if I'm not mistaken, or Kim and Jay. I could see it there at 76. Mm -hmm. So it's the 76 minute. I'm as, In that pause where Kim and Jay's coming on, I'm like, all right, they're going defensive. They're, they're going to probably have five. And at one point, they had six players on their back line uh, protecting against the last Arsenal attack. And I thought, here's a great moment for... I don't know who, who, who right? Who's you know what I mean? Who? Exactly, exactly. Who? Who? Who's gonna be the one now to be like, I got this? There was no one. There was no one that I could look at and be like, Yo, you're the guy. I think back to much worse Arsenal teams. You know, teams of old, and I think, yeah, there was like an Ozil or. You know, there were there were there was a player where I'm like, all right, there may be a little sense of magic, and maybe that could be Odegaard in the future. But in this game, once he went down, he did not look 100. percent Yeah, he was and, running. I mean, a he was bit going. Rougher. I mean, the uh, in the beginning of the game, they were they weren't. He was iffy of like if they if yeah, him yeah. and Saka were gonna play, and you sort of saw that they probably both weren't uh, at 100. percent But there's also where it's you know Arsenal's just not deep enough to to miss out on two players. Uh, what, like but that. there's very few teams in the world that are deep enough. To, well, in this competition though, yeah, yeah, yeah there's you, you kind of got to be. <laughs> you got, you know? <laughs> this ain't the conference. Yeah. You know? Look, and when, and Ketia came on in the game, uh, you know, Trossard came on in the and game. And Ketia like, came on. I knew he was done, bro. Th I there was a little bit of that, right? What, what, yeah. What is this? No yeah. offense to Eddie and Ketia, but I, I know he's on it the market. It was too late also. It was like, Arteta, if you're going to make a sub, do it five minutes before. Don't give the kid three minutes to make as, a, an impact. As much as I can see that point, I kind of disagree because if the run of play, you're hoping your team can kind of figure it out. And to switch it up is essentially saying, like, all right, we're changing our tactics as opposed to, well, they haven't really been able to – they've been stopping us, but we've also been stopping them, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, in a way, 
you kind of be like, maybe they could figure it out, especially when you bring on like a Gabriel Jesus. But uh, his 67th minute, I'm like already like, eh. Yeah. I, look, to me, the, the game, in my opinion, was lost by Arsenal in the first leg. Uh, I mean, giving up the penalty, huge. They gave him two of the three goals they scored in this competition. Yeah. They handed to them. And then and then the um, the, the the shot by Ben White that went d- directly to Manuel Neuer. You that, mean the pass? <laughs> <laughs> those are the two moments to me that I'm like, if those two things don't happen, I think Arsenal uh, win this. Because they look, they... they the to, penalty To hold well. them to one goal, at, you know, at Bayern at home. And, and Bayern also, it looks worse to me because Bayern are having a, the, a miserable season uh, as well. Not in really. Bundesliga. No, I'm just saying they haven't looked. They, this is the only uh, uh, competition that they can win a trophy in remaining. And you, But there was just something to... Look, you, we were making fun of Eric Dyer and, and how nice and nice and nice. Uh, but it really felt like... For Eric Dyer and Harry Kane, they were like, "This is the only game that matters this year," and they and they and they showed that like, they played like that's what that's what their priority was. Yeah, so this certainly is the best Eric Dyer's looked on Bayern, by the <laughs> way, for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then yeah, and then also be, familiar foe maybe Kim, Kim and Jay is they were talking about him. Uh, he wants to go back. He to wants Napoli. to go back to Napoli because he's not getting could because Eric Dyer basically took his spot. Uh, but it's it's like a weird. To me, uh, uh, Min Jae is probably the better defender, but maybe by, you know, they, there's just more faith in Eric Dyer at the moment. I don't know. Kim uh, Min Jae is just like, yo, this fool sucks. <laughs> okay, real, so let, real quick we, uh, before we uh, before Ali joins us, but the, the other matches, obviously um, uh, the one yesterday, Man, Man City against Real Madrid. This this is uh, a game, another game of, of felt like um, chess for the most part. Um, but the you, you know the 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 onslaught that Man Man City put on uh, on Real Madrid was clearly apparent. We're looking at the momentum chart right now, and it's it's it looks it barely looks like Real Madrid was even a part of this game. But that's <laughs> that that was the strategy. That's pretty standard though for a city. I, <laughs> although I will say, you know, Carlo Ancelotti said they did they didn't expect to be pinned back that far. Mm-hmm. which is similar to what Arsenal said when uh, Martin Odegaard said after the game where they played very defensively too. And he said he got the, he got the tactics wrong. He's saying, you know, he, they suffered. They just suffered. They were able to suffer longer. And really it went to penalties, and it was a Bernardo Silva, u, uh, you know, mistake that made the difference. A lot of people are giving them plaudits for how well they defended. We had Guillaume Balaguer on the show this morning, and I kind of agree with him when he says, when he said, when he says he is. I don't know why I got a southern accent. Let me tell you about that Guillaume. Uh, Alex, all of a sudden, is from Louisiana. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going Foghorn Leghorn, which we do on the show, unfortunately, a couple oh, of man, times. sounds like Gambit from X Men. <laughs> yeah. You missed me with that reference. Go the Creole, the Creole. Oh, okay, yeah. Creole. Uh, well, let me tell you about that. Uh, no, um, one mistake from Bernardo Silva in the penalties, and now we're saying like, oh, they they defended so well. I agree with Guillaume when he says, no, nah, they didn't defend well. They gave up. Look at this: thirty three total shots, yeah. nine shots on target, three big chances, which isn't the most, but I mean, the header from from Erling Holland. Bangs the off the crossbar. Yeah. If that goes in, right, everyone's saying it, like, it, "Oh, they figured out how to beat Real Madrid." You know what I mean? It, it, and it, it landed at like uh, Bernardo Silva's like thigh. He yeah. didn't know what, kind of like what to do. He didn't know what foot to go with or whatever. Uh, I would say the game was lost in the second half by when when uh, Kevin De Bruyne didn't. He had yeah. a great chance that he hit that over the crazy. bar. That is a Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, like Hollywood scripted the first, shot. The, the goal he scored was probably harder than yeah, the one he yeah. missed. So don't. Re- I, it's just a, a a situation where the um, look Real Madrid just held on and they defended well enough. I say bravely. Bravely okay. is what they defended. Sure. I don't think I they think, defended well. I think Lunin deserves a lot of credit too. He had a fantastic third, game. That's your third choice keeper. Yeah. Did you see the? Was it, I don't know if it was the announcers on CBS, but there was a, this clip is kind of going viral of the announcers talking about uh, one of the announcers who was like, obviously a former player, and he's like he played at Etihad, and he's like he said Etihad is one of the most comfortable places to play, and he's like I'm not saying that as a compliment. He said <laughs> that the that the fans are, are very polite. They don't yell anything at you. They don't make it uncomfortable for you. Uh, and, and Meanwhile, I almost got my ass beat <laughs> in the stand. <laughs> Maybe I should have been a player. <laughs> so, uh, you know, kind of knocking on, like, the the passion from uh, from City fans, which is, like, I've never been, uh, uh, you know, I've never seen a game at the SES. I so. do like that it's considered, a, 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 you know, 
not complimentary to say, my life wasn't threatened once in your right, establishment. Right. <laughs> what? Yeah, where do we yeah. stand on this? It's like, I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm not in danger playing uh, yeah. in this stadium. I don't really like it. Yeah, okay? You know what I could do here? I hate this place. I could bring my wife and kids here. <laughs> Ew, dude. <laughs> Damn, bro. Don't y'all care? <laughs> it's straight. It's like one of those, like, when you hear somebody mention, like, a, a sexual kink that's just, like, too much, and you're like, okay, so you, how did you get there? I'm just saying, it's just, I normally say. I'm the one to go there, but <laughs> I need to find out how you got here, sir. Oh, so you tell me you cannot, you cannot finish if you're not being choked. Oh, severely. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Okay, why is it? Why do yeah. you need that? It's okay? like, bro, she's terrible in bed. She didn't punch me in the face <laughs> once. I'm like, wait, why do you? <laughs> why do why you, you need, need that though? <laughs> so badly. This might be. I may not. I may not be your mother or father, but can I hug you? <laughs> okay. And maybe might that'll help resolve. A little bit of unresolved trauma. Mm -hmm. that we yeah, yeah. Out why you enjoy I'm this. okay that that's what you're into, but you got to talk to somebody. At least figure out where it came from. So, look, it, it, um, the, yeah, the, the penalty from uh, Bernardo Silva, look, if he makes it, he looks brilliant. Uh, Lunin, like you said, uh, uh, Mike, the, it, Lunin, uh, he, he had, you know, I think. He had to stand on his head. Yeah. yeah. They he, were giving away shots at nauseam. It, it was the. Um, the How many? Nine saves? Uh, yeah, Ooh. I mean some big one. Yeah, some huge saves. But the um the penalty stops from from Kovacic and for and Bernardo Silva. To me, you remember remember when we spoke to Sean Johnson about uh, Ederson? Uh, 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 no, no, no. That was um uh that, well, Zach Steffen. Zach Steffen. But when we spoke to Sean Johnson after the 2021 MLS Cup final, asking him about he he stopped two penalties against the Timbers, mm -hmm. and we asked him like, Yo, how did you how do you do it? And what he said, what he said, he said. Homework. Homework. That's it. And that's when I'm watching Lunin, I'm like, dude. He look, he look. I remember when he said that I threw my backpack and I said, I'm, I'm not going to school anymore. <laughs> Sean, it was just trauma. <laughs> I want to apologize to Sean Johnson now. So that's what it um, uh, felt like the, that Lunin, I, I, I thought, just did. In a way, I think it helped them having a third uh, third choice keeper because you you gotta prepare heavily. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. you know what I mean. You yeah. can't look like an idiot. You only do homework. Yeah, really. yeah, yeah. <laughs> homework is what you're supposed to you're do. You're drowning in paperwork when you want to <laughs> yeah, stop yeah. shots. You're like, no, nah, yeah. they won't even let you train. No, no, they're like, bro, get back in there and work on them on the QED report. <laughs> you know, so Man. like you prepare because you're the one who's got to be prepared. You're the, usually the one telling the other keepers, hey, yo, he likes to go to the left. Yeah, the, you the, know. Another one. This this was. On Why does he get arrested in the first photo <laughs> <laughs> this was also fascinating I, I don't have the clip uh here but on the on the broadcast also the 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 on the paramount plus broadcast i thought the announcers were fascinating because during the penalties he 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 compared the the pressure and and like you know stress please not to the ukrainian he war did situation. bro oh my god cool. <laughs> he was cool. like you know <laughs> I mean, oh, not, because he comes from the town that's right, like being right, right, right. battered, right? <laughs> so yeah, there was a there was a comparison. He was basically saying like, uh, I, I I don't have I don't want to butcher it essentially, but he just he just brought this it is up. A tough paraphrase. <laughs> there. It's a tough, but he, he essentially brought it up as like, but he kind of he did the uh, speaking of pressure. <laughs> he kind of apologized. He's like, I know it's not exactly the same as what's going, on, but he said it like, oh, I know he has a lot on his mind because of the, the you know the war and all this stuff, and it's just like you and bro, I have been around like don't even bring him this up. Right? <laughs> you and I have been around press boxes, press boxes enough, and now I get the, I'll get like the Champions League data pack, yeah, which is like you know, it's like a book they hand mm -hmm. you, and if you flip through enough, you get to like random fact section, mm -hmm. and you know he must have just looked down and right. been like, oh Ukraine, <laughs> oh, I got, and my oh. brain made that connection, <laughs> and I started speaking, and now I need to find a way out of it. <laughs> Audience is gonna love this. Damn, um, look at me dropping facts. Because when when I was um um emceeing the Premier League fan fest, mm -hmm. I would hear the announcement in my ear and kind of toss back to Rebecca Lowe and toss back to the whole crew and John Champion because we were in Nashville he would um, he would find a, a, a segue to to give props to um, to Nashville in some way so basically if the I don't know say that it was Bournemouth and they were wearing black jerseys he would be like you know, the, they like the the man in black, or like Johnny Cash yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah, and it'll yeah. be like uh, sending it back to you in Nashville. It's not, you know, it's the the, the team in black or whatever. And it was just like, ha ha, all right, this is great. <laughs> oh yeah, cute, John. Uh, oh, look at this. He figured out a way to <laughs> blend both. Yeah. That's how you do it. Though. Yeah. You gotta be, you gotta be corny. You gotta be a little, a little silly, cringy, you whatever. Gotta not. Yeah, you don't, <laughs> don't bring up war is the other one. My man has a lot on his yeah, mind. Yeah, you are yeah, yeah. right. And the fact that he could accomplish this regardless of what's going on. How maybe. about this? I'll say this is the last thing I'll say about announcers. You know, our homie, Chris Whittingham, yeah. Witty, 
gets to call matches Can't with Ray Hudson. With, with Ray Hudson. The legend. I was talking to a friend of mine who's British, and they were like, yo, this uh, this co-commentator annoys me, and I immediately got on the uh, on the offensive. I was to. like, bro, this is witty, bro. This is, <laughs> this is American culture. What you talking about? This is one of us. I'm in group chats with my guy. How dare you? And they said, no, I'm talking about the other guy. And I was like, how dare you disrespect <laughs> your own countrymen if you consider Britain, because he's Scottish. Ray Hudson. Yo, he's your Winnie. culture. Okay, th these are two people. That, that's it. They, they, you are not allowed to criticize them. No, this is shepherd's pie with, the, with melted cheese on it, bro. <laughs> okay, this is Arroz con habichuela yeah, for us, yeah. bro. That's it. Inside of a Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> How dare you, bro? This is culture. These are our people. And it's nice to have our people that uh -huh. we, we will blindly defend. Yeah, 100%. That's it. We Witty, Witty had all, <laughs> all of my armament. <laughs> but he was talking about Ray Hudson. Could you imagine a Brit being... Annoyed by by Ray Hudson? I don't get it. What they they prefer the the you know what is it Martin Tyler? Boy, Ray Hudson said about Ter Stegen. You know what he said about him? What he said? This is the last thing. Then we can go to our interview. He said that Ter Stegen could put a pint of beer in a shot glass from from the other side of the bar. <laughs> That's how good he is at long balls. I mean, what are we talking about? Here? How could you hate that? A okay. beer was brought up. A bar was brought up. Football was brought up. That's all you have. Hating that on, and tikka masala. That's hate, all you got. Hating on uh, our poets, bro. Bro, uh, damn. Uh, and just to wrap up, obviously, PSG uh, beat Barcelona. And we can oh, go. Yeah. We'll probably have more time next week, and we could probably uh, revisit it. But, yes, the penalty changed it all. I think, my opinion, if the, that if that a red card doesn't happen, or not penalty. So if that if that red card doesn't happen, uh, I think Barcelona win. Uh, my my thought. And, and well, then, I guess we'll never know. <laughs> I guess we'll never know. And also Dortmund beating Atletico in just crazy really one of the craziest games. I didn't. Again, another team, Dortmund and Bayern. They're like, forget Bundesliga. Never heard <laughs> yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> we don't need it, bro. We don't need it. Xavi Alonso ruined it. <laughs> so, you know the last time the Wembley had a, a Champions League final, what the teams were? No, I don't know. It was Dortmund versus Bayern, bro. Get out of here. Yeah. Oh, we might, uh, we might have it again. Double it up? Okay. Ew, Harry Kane in the Champions League final? <laughs> no, thank you. That would be the worst Champions League no, final. No, no bro. I don't well, know. Well, as someone who works at CBS, I can tell you, we do not want that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't spoken to anybody about that, but the I can guarantee you. The last time that many Germans came to... Uh, <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, what are you? What are you? One of the announcers? Sorry, sorry. I'm, uh, <laughs> stop reading the fact sheets. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's be. Uh, well, let's go to our interview uh, with Ali Curtis. Uh, obviously, uh, senior vice president, MLS Next Pro. We'll talk about a lot of stuff going on in MLS Next uh, with him. Uh, so uh, let's. He's get gonna ready. put Christian in a sin bin. <laughs> <laughs> let's go see it. Oh, look at the the wonderful guests. Look at this, man. I am uh, thrilled because uh, what I'm excited about mainly is because we had uh, uh, our next guest on uh, a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yo, I want to come back. And I was like, you know what? We usually don't get that. Wow. We, <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah. Most people are like, I tried it. <laughs> and we've decided not for us. Okay. Yeah. I left a one-star review on mm -hmm. Yelp, and that's it. You I've know what? In fact, I left my jacket there and keep it. <laughs> It's your jacket. <laughs> uh, no, absolutely honored to welcome back the senior vice president of MLS Next Pro, the the homie at this point. Uh, please give it up for Ali Curtis, everybody. Ali, welcome back. <laughs> What's up, Ali? Thank you. It's good to be back. It's good uh, to see you guys. All right. And Amazing. Since the last time you were on, uh, it, I'm just glad that uh, nothing controversial has ever happened in uh, within the league and within American There's soccer. There's no rules that are being <laughs> tested out in MLS Next Pro. Nothing has, uh, nothing crazy has happened. Uh, but no, let, let's kind of start there because uh, this week uh, Major League Soccer is introducing the the new rules, um, uh, the the time substitution rule, the 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 in stadium uh, VAR announcements, and also the um, uh, what am I? Off field treatment rule. Off field treatment OTR. rule. So if you are... Uh, well, we got V-A-R, O-T-R. Is there another acronym? <laughs> we can make up some. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, essentially, if a, a player is uh, down injured on the field for 15 seconds or more, they have to uh, be taken off the field, and they'll be off for two minutes uh, at minimum. What if they stand up and then go back down real quick? Does okay, that yeah, restart yeah. Now the we're clock? Gonna, now we're going to throw you some curveballs, Ali. What? <laughs> Does that restart the clock? <laughs> we, have, we have talked to the referees, and they're going to use common sense and be proactive about those types of situations. Oh. Okay. Got to cover. Gotta okay. Cover. So this. Uh, so uh, for people who may not be aware, Ali Curtis uh, is, uh, you know, the mastermind behind uh, these rules. Uh, uh, tested them out in MLS Next Pro. They were well received, uh, and clearly, with all the research and data, uh, it kind of says like this is the, a better way to sort of 
view and play the game of, of soccer. That is one credit MLS, I think, has and should be given is that they're willing to try stuff first. The first to have VAR, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Correct. So I like that. I like that. It's like, you know, uh, willing to take that step forward. How do you feel about how these rules went into place? Obviously, the, the fear mongering is that this is going to change the sport. Blah, blah. Every little change is going to change the sport. Do you think this changed or adjusted the way the game is played at all? I, I, you know, we don't want to change the game. The game mm -hmm. by itself is good enough. Um, you know, we all grew up playing the game. We're fans of the game. And um, so the, the intent is not to change the game. Um, it's to evolve it in different ways, you know. And we, we've been using this, um, you know, we've been thinking about it in this lens in that, you know, the game's been around for over 100 years, and so have the, so have the, the rules and the laws of the game. They've been around for 100 years, yet so many other parts of the game have evolved in, and changed. You know, the players that play the game, the diversity that you see on the field, the, the tactics that go into um, coaching and what that looks like. Um, how fans in the building watch the game, how we consume it, you know, away from the field. All of those things have evolved. And so, um, you know, we, we, we want to evolve the games, you know, on the field and off the field. And so um, we've taken those steps. And so we're really excited about these rules to be implemented and launched in, in MLS this weekend. Um, you know, we all watch games and watch soccer um, domestically and you know globally and we say hey why does that happen or why doesn't that happen or could it be ch changed or modified a little bit and this is our opportunity so in MLS Next Pro we've been able to you know test some rules um, and have gotten some really great results you know not just the data and kind of the analytics but also just talking to uh, the players the coaches the athletic trainers you know those that are kind of in the trenches um, to see how the, the rules have been working. And they've worked well, so we're excited. Can what? we suggest some new rules? Okay. Absolutely. If you're willing to try stuff out. Uh, Alexis, <laughs> uh, hold on, just be, be clear. Alexis is stressing the we part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really hard. I, I think, by the way, uh, Christian co-signs everything about this. I need you to know that. How about this? If a player goes down, and, the, and for some reason, the majority of fans in the stadium, maybe there's a way to vote, think this guy's faking it. <laughs> <laughs> they got to they got to wear a thing that doesn't let them bend their knees so they got to run with one peg leg essentially <laughs> One leg stiff, straight out for the rest of the match, just to stop them from doing it. We'll take it to the committee. Okay, I'll the committee. You know, we'll committee. hear this. We're open for business. We'll take it. We'll take, you know, and that's one of the things. You know, we created a committee. You know, from a lot of different folks. How do I get on this are, committee? We, we, you got. We, we'll we'll take that to the committee. You know, the and committee. Then, ain't here. The committee will hear. When you're allowed the, in the committee. committee will take to the committee and then the committee. Yeah. The so. committee's like, yeah. So this is. The committee, right? <laughs> no new members, right? Yeah. <laughs> Not that guy. Yeah. Don't don't call us. We'll call you. Yeah. 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 You know? Where does this committee meet? You can't tell me. <laughs> 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 Look, I, I, well, I, the, uh, on a more serious note, the, uh, the 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 maybe the the player responses, the the data that you've received, uh, based on especially the the off field treatment rule, that that is the one that I think is the the most controversial to some people because Correct. sometimes people feel, uh, and, and this is, uh, Alexis brings this up uh, often that that you know. Let's let's just say, quote unquote, faking an injury is sort of part of the game. It's almost a little. It's 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 working the Sometimes refs. Sometimes it's called the dark art. Dark in some cases. Working the refs. We're in Concacaf. We got to be Concacafy. You know, <laughs> yeah. you're very familiar we with it. We got to Concacaf it up. <laughs> you know? So some people some people think like this is. It, some people are annoyed by it and they're like, oh, player, these play, soccer players, they flop too much. I always faking injuries. But then part of it is like it, it also gives the opportunity for the players to. Uh, rest a little bit, right? You know, it, it there's no be, timeouts. You know, That's we nice saw little. we saw in the Champions League there was a, a, a an injury, so, a soccer injury, and the, uh, all the Arsenal players are getting water. Uh, and, and Bayern Munich is like, all right, we're still playing, right? And it was like they're basically tr we're trying to score with with no uh, uh, defenders on the pitch. And they should have been disqualified as an Arsenal fan. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time to just a Bayern go. But, so the the fact that um, that you know this this rule it removes that because now there is a penalty for if you fake an injury, you're going to be off the pitch for two minutes, and the team is have to going to play uh, with the player down. Is what what's been the reception? Uh, or or the result uh, specifically, like the reception from the players. Like, do the players like it? Whether they do or don't, I mean, I, it doesn't really matter. But do they do they like it? A and Can the rule be taken advantage of? Sure. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That's another question as well. So I think the way the game, you know, we watch soccer. You know, you you watch watch the game five years ago, watch it twenty years ago, watch it fifty years ago, seventy five years ago. The way the game is played, 
is different over time. And, you know, when you think about time wasting, when you think about um, uh, what you, you said, players faking an injury, that stuff has changed, you know, a lot over time. You know, and, you know, I think everyone has a different opinion, but, you know, the majority of the folks that we speak to, um, they don't like to watch, you know, players flopping around mm -hmm. and, and wasting time. And we want more of the game. We want more soccer. At the end of the you know, this rule is not going to eliminate, you know, uh, faking an injury. But we also think that there's an, uh, there's an also added benefit to this rule in that we think it's also going to um, enhance player health and safety. You know, we think that players going off the field for two minutes – in a less pressurized environment, you know, you imagine a player going down on the, on the ground for a potential injury, 25,000 people, there are 21 other players, both technical staffs, and that player is getting treated. We think having that player removed from the field, off the field, where the athletic trainer can be focused on that player, that player, we think that from a player health and safety perspective, that's a good evolution. That is a good dynamic to happen. Um, you know, in terms of what players, you know, so far, thus far in the last year and a half, um, you know, the feedback that we've gotten has been positive. You know, um, can you game the system? Can, are there loopholes? Not, it's not off-field treatment rule or time substitution. It's all rules, mm -hmm. you know, that, yeah. um, you know, the stakes are high. And so in those moments, you, um, you know, a lot of times folks try to game the system. I mean, when I was a, when I was a player, um, I was taught to, uh, we were taught to fake injuries, delay games. You know, you know, all you say, the dark arts, there's always a game within the game. And then, you know, the way the game is played in one um, area may be different than the way it's played in different areas. The way right. it's played in California could be different from the way it's played in Jersey, you know, and those types of things. Um, Guaranteed. You know, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> those are two but, polar <laughs> opposites. But, but those are, you know, um, but we think that it's important that um, we embrace kind of this evolution. The Premier League, you know, stole our rule. You know, um, you know, when I when I um, when we were creating this rule um, at the time, Howard Webb, who was the head of pro, mm -hmm. you know, I said, hey, Howard, what do you think about this rule? This, that and the other. They pro helped us in consultation, you know, um, uh, uh, get the rule to where it was. And and then they implemented the Premier League implemented their version of OTR. Um, in their league last summer. So, Unbelievable. Um, it's Premier a, League stole it. Word know. for word, bar so, for bar. So, um, <laughs> what what Premier League I coming for? Yeah. So, you, so that's what it means. Oh, now you know. We watch it, Howard. <laughs> With your web of lies. Howard. <laughs> oh, we Howard Webb is a large man. Yeah. Bro. I don't know. And I, may I remind you that Christian posts are <laughs> okay. It's going to be a 2v1. I think so. Uh, when do you actually go down though to start the 15 seconds like if i go down on one knee and i'm like ah <laughs> once play has stopped um that's kind of when the 15 seconds and yeah. then and then it's like it's a game right the you know this thing like you said there's no timeouts and so it's a conversation it's it's the we expect the ref to confer with the player hey right. are you how, how are you doing do you need do you need assistance do you need the medical team come on and then once that there's 15 seconds once that happens if if the player needs medical assistance, then that player's gonna come on, then that team's So it's not come like on. boxing where the guy's no, counting it's, down. It's, <laughs> you know. yeah. Yeah. 13, 14, guys trying to get yeah. in. Yeah! yeah. Two minutes. It's, it's gonna it, be like WWE <laughs> and the 14 second, they're gonna get up off the ground. Yeah, like, yeah. like they're One gonna shoulder <laughs> lifts up. But, but, but let me, but let me. And Virgil Van Dyke comes out of smoke. <laughs> let me hit you with it. So before the, we implemented the rule, Five or six times per game, a player was going down for injury, right, right? right? And then of those five or six times per game, only 8% of the time was was a player act, was that player actually being substituted. And some of those substitutions had to deal with tactical substitutions and all these types of things. Once we implemented the rule, that number reduced to like one time per game. And then there are exceptions, like if a player is bleeding, if there's contact above the shoulders. And so of that one time per game, it's really reduced to... Once every five games was a player going down for 15 seconds or longer oh, wow. um, for a potential injury. So it was, you know, and at the end of the day, one, we want to have an environment where players are safe and we can treat them in the right way. And then also we just want more soccer. Yeah, we, yeah. Want, we want more I of love, the game. It's good for fans, good for players, I love coaches, hearing, everything. I love hearing that data because I think, you know, I don't think these rules get implemented unless there's a positive a result to, to to show Major League Soccer and be like, hey, I think this can work and improve the game and in, in, improve just the, the, the product as a That's whole. That's important to say. No one's trying to make the game worse. Right, right. It's all in an effort to the make it The one thing I, I will ask, and this is just being, a, I don't know if it's a devil's advocate or just being, a, but but 
will would this incentivize defenders or players to be a little bit more aggressive in challenges to therefore hopefully make them miss uh, uh, their opponent mm. miss those two minutes? Good question, but I have an answer for it. Go for <laughs> it. Yeah. No. So I, I think first of all, um, there it's really important that everyone reads all the details of the rule before they kind of like have place judgment, you know? What if what um, if we're not going to do that? Because the new <laughs> <laughs> or have, Ollie, some, it is or this way, have someone read the rules to him. You know? <laughs> oh, okay. We got books on tape. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what, what, that, so we, we, we talked about that specific instance. Is yeah. this going to make the game more more brutal or more more mm -hmm. physical? And, and so that's why we put in the rule one of the conditions if... Uh, if a player goes down for 15 seconds or longer for an injury for a foul that's associated with a red or a yellow card, then that's an exception. Player can be down on the ground for longer than 15 seconds, yeah. and the uh, the medical team can come on, and the player doesn't have to go off for ah, for, okay. for, for two minutes. So we try to balance, you know, that those types of nuance. And and then the other thing that that I would say is that I don't want to get lost is you're imp we're implementing. There are there we the reason why we were implementing is is like I said, twofold again. It's one for those situations to improve, potentially improve player health, but it's also for all those times where your team is down. You know, it's the 80th minute and your team is down a goal and you need to equalize. And the player is taking four minutes. We all know know what's happening yeah, yeah. in the stadium. Those instances we we have been able to reduce those. And they're not good for the game. They're they're not good for the fans, not good for the teams. We talked about a lot at stake. So um yeah. Okay. I, ha I have a serious question. Was it considered that you just let the fans in on how much added time is left in the game? Now, one of the things that's, that is a big point, a bone of contention for fans is that there's one dude in the whole building who knows how much time is left. And there's 22 people running around trying to win a match. So let's say you're wasting time. Wasting time always seemed kind of dumb to me because I'm like, they're just going to add it on at the end. But I get the point of the added pressure of not knowing exactly how much time, because it's up to or as much as six minutes if there's six minutes added to the clock at the end. Why not just let everyone know how much time? And then if the dude on his little, you know, Apple Watch or whatever he has adds more time, it's shown to the fans, oh, more time was added because this guy's on the floor faking it or this this sub was taken too long. Why not just do that? So. Don't I agree with you? Uh, we've had this. Tell the committee, we, not we, me, man. We, 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 we've had this conversation, um, you know, a lot and over the years. The, the, but the reality is one of the things I mentioned earlier is that you know the game is over a hundred years. The laws and the rules are over a hundred years. It's hard to change. And so even in the conversation that we're having about OTR time substitution. Like, it, it was not easy to get those rules over the line. It was not easy to desensitize people in terms of what this new rule was going to mean, how it was going to be better for the – help evolve the game, those types of things. Um, change is not easy in some of these sports. You know, baseball with the pitch clock and all those types of things. Um, um, but we – you know, the game of soccer, the game of football, how you know, wherever you're from or however you call it, um, it, it, it takes time. And, and some of that, I, I guess, is a good thing as well because – it is, like I said before, on its on its own, it's a beautiful game, and so we don't need to change it, yeah. and we don't want to change it. It's great. We love it. Um, in terms of the clock and those types of things, you know, I listen, there should be more transparency in terms of what's happening, you know, um, on the field, you know, and hopefully with technology and those types of things, we'll be able to do that so that people can go from the living room to the field and, and, and all those types of things, and the folks that are in the stadium understand what's happening. Um, there's more to come on that. And, you know, we, I think we're, we're forming this, um, this potential something down the pipe where I, I, you know, I really like the idea of, you know, um, there's certain moments where I just think the clock should stop, to be honest with you. Um, now, something like that would require uh, an IFAB and a FIFA. Yeah. Um, like, I, I yeah. think what, if there's a penalty kick, you know, um, and, you know, the ball's wherever it needs to be, why not stop the clock? You know, if there is a... Um, uh, if a player is down for an injury and is getting treatment, that's going to take three, four minutes. I thought Why about not, that. Was it not the World well, Cup? When did uh, you know? When when did Christian Eriksen go down? Euro twenty twenty. Euros. Euros. Yeah. I, you know the well, fact that the clock was still well, running. It's why like, not we, stop the clock? Yeah. 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 yeah there's there's some points where the rules aren't really that important right now. Well, yeah. Th there are just certain moments where it's like what we all say is, 
why is that happening? Why don't they stop the clock? Why, why can't we change this? And the response, and a lot of the responses that you get in different, is this is the way it's always been done. And so how do you change yeah. it? And so that's, that's what we've been trying to do, or how do you modify it, is we're looking at the game. It, it's not just folks that are just in one building. It's trying to engage a lot of different people that have played this game, that have watched this game, that believe it, that love it. And then how do you evolve it and create some really new good rules that, can, that are good for all of it? And, so, and it's hard because people don't understand. And again, even like I've had these Zooms yesterday, today, tomorrow, the last months, all this, you know, and, you know, there's some OTR, like you mentioned, is more controversial. But I think once once it unrolls and once it once it gets going, people will see. It's it's it'll be a good. Well, the one thing I Alex is talking about the time and everything. Now in the in the 2024 MLS season, when you when you're at a game in stadium, you will see the clock go yeah. past 90 yeah. minutes. And uh, you know, I've, I've gone to a couple games, and I'll be honest, I don't like it. I'm like, <laughs> I I there was something about you're like, you tell me too much. I, I, yeah, there was something to like. You know, end the game, Rev, end the game. I'm, well, I'm like, no, I know that when the game is ending, and I'm, I'm waiting for the game to end. I, you know why I hate it? Because I can't whistle. I don't have the ability to do it. You know, everyone whistles when they think it's time. Right, right. It, I can't whistle, so I don't want. Okay. I, yeah, I can't. Don't, don't flex on me, Ali. All right, all right, all right. Okay. I'm being no. triggered right now okay. by someone who has no gaps in their teeth. Okay. I can't whistle. Let's move on uh, to another another subject that is, uh, you know, uh, MLS Next is definitely definitely uh, very much involved in the U.S. Open Cup. Is obviously a co- it was a, a controversial uh, issue with uh, MLS uh, deciding to basically only have certain uh, of their first teams uh, play in the tournament. Right now, we've been seeing the MLS Next Pro teams. Uh, we just saw New York City FC 2 uh, play against uh, Hartford Athletic in, in a very, very entertaining game. I very even, competitive. I even tweeted yesterday. I'm like, hey, look, this this scenario is not the ideal one. This is not what I would have preferred. But there's some thing, especially as an NYCFC fan, to see the, the, the second team play against uh, a professional, also p- professional teams of older men, uh, uh, and and getting these results uh, uh, at New York City FC two is I think the only remaining uh, MLS Next Pro team. I could be incorrect about that, but I think that's the case. And th- so it's been a, it's a big issue. I, I I don't know. You know I think, uh, and I'll give you full uh, uh, credit to say that. You know, we understand you work for Major League Soccer, and there's a <laughs> <laughs> only so much you can uh, there's say. There's only so much you can say. You know, we've been, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you've had conversations with peers, with with uh, uh, other detractors, or people who agree, disagree. I think right. I think it's a it's a good conversation to have, and what this uh, tournament means for American soccer. But as far as the the involvement of MLS Next Pro, um, so, some teams have not had good results, some have. But your uh, just thoughts in in how this is all sort of rolling out. What are your thoughts in now that these MLS Next teams are playing, and and, and just give your thoughts on on how you think this, uh, how it how it's working out. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, first, let, let, a couple of things. So first, I'll say, um, one year you always want um, you know a, a, a good sample size of data before you kind of weigh in in terms of what this thing looks like. You right. know, so this is it's still early days. Um, what I'll say about the game that last night, Hartford Athletic USL Championship versus NYCFC 2, um, you know, MLS Next Pro, that was a really good game. You know, at the end of the day, you had a 16-year-old player on an MLS contract on loan. He scores the winning goal. Um, that's an amazing moment. It's a development opportunity. It's, um, it's, it was a really cool game, and it was an exciting game. It was a good match. Um, and then when you think about all the different things that, that we're all collectively – you know, all the different leagues, all the different um, coaches and players are invested in as we lead into 2026 and we have all these competitions like the World Cup, that's really good for soccer. For something like that to happen, for a game like that to happen um, is really, really good. Um, So that's what I'll say in that moment. And so happy about that that game happened, happy those two teams involved, those players involved. Um, in terms of the U.S. Open Cup, how I think about it broadly is it's an amazing tournament. Like, it's David, Goliath, cup sets, all that stuff. There's a burrito it's shop the, that it, just got bumped yeah, out. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, you know. it, it's the fabric of it, – it is a massive piece of fabric of American soccer. And, you know, the, the, this, you know that tournament, that tournament, that format, it, you know, you have it in variations, you know, around the world – 
but it's a beautiful game. It's a beautiful turn. That has been around for, you know, a hundred, over 100 years as well. Yeah. So when we talked about new rules early on, how do you evolve it to for, for what's happening? There's an opportunity for the Open Cup to evolve as well. There's some things that you can look at kind of on the field and off the field um, to make it um, what it needs to be. You know, the landscape of soccer has changed so much. There's different leagues. There's different teams. The players that are playing, you know, soccer professionally and from a youth perspective in this country, that has changed and evolved and grown massively. You, we're talking on – in. You, you would have never had something like this 15 years ago. You would have never had this conversation, you know, this audience 10 years ago. So – you know, on the field, the sport, the competition of soccer has changed. The business of soccer has changed. And so there's just opportunity to evolve it, change it. We've got, you know, with the, there was the FIFA Club World Cup. There's, there's Champions uh, Cup. There's all these different tournaments and these different opportunities. It's good to have diversity of teams, diversity of players, different types of players that are involved in the U.S. Open Cup. That's good for soccer. That's good for all of us as Americans. So excited about that. In terms of the results, MLS Next Pro teams did not perform at a level that we – the results were not what it needed to be. Yeah. You know, um, excited, happy about um, MLS. W- wasn't happy that, that, that NYCFC 2 played Red Bull 2 in the second round. You know, so they both – I think in the first round they both played each other. And your reward, boom, is to play each other in the second round. Yeah. But so there's opportunity for, um, for change, evolution – conversation i think if we all can you know so many different leagues and constituents collectively come together and have conversations about what's happening we can build this thing in a really good way um yeah you know there's we we we, it's it's a good opportunity for our clubs in mls next pro to um to develop evolve get better um find play different competition all those types of things i remember when i was you know i think you know gosh my i think my rookie year in mls we played uh in the u.s open cup and we lost to a lower division team it was a different hotel we had to stay at it was a different flight pattern that we had to uh to be on we had to play in this um in a different stadium the the field wasn't great it was rocky bumpy we played with a hybrid team i remember we lost that game at the time i think it was the atlanta silverbacks you know, um, so but those are good moments for our players, for our coaches. Um, it's good for soccer. Um, and because you, know, you played in this competition, you you were obviously a youth yeah. player in America. Can you see where the vitriol or, or the instant reaction came from with with the announcement that not all senior teams in MLS would play in it? Or are you so close to it that you, the only thing you can think of is like, well, at least this is a good opportunity for the kids in MLS next. Yeah, because I, I, and I'll just add, I mean, you gotta yeah. feel some type of way when the Tim, Timbers two lose to a burrito shop, right? There's, there has to be something. Right? Come on, man. Come on. Do you, do you at least on, get man. a free burrito? Come on, come on, man. As the SVP, <laughs> you gotta hit that button. I know there's the sounds and things like that. That you know, I don't know what, what <laughs> sound you make, but no. Um, uh, gosh, so. Uh, is the question, I guess, is uh, how do you feel? Or well, you know, no, could what, you could what, you understand what, you where know? that instant reaction came from as someone who is not just someone who played, but also a fan of the game? I w- 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 there is, <laughs> I can answer this question in so many different ways. We talked a little bit about that on the last time I was on mm-hmm. here. Is that it's a it's 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 amazing that you have people that are so passionate and emotion about what happens in this game. Like in terms of, hey, if you change something, if you don't change something, you know, you, you haven't always had that reaction, you know, if you go back 40, 50 years ago, but you have that now. And that means that people care. They're passionate. They love the game, all those types of things. So if you're going to change or evolve a competition that is a beautiful competition, there has to be a reaction, positive, negative. Um, those are good things. That means that it has a heart. It has a pulse. Um, and that's important. And I think that we have to listen. We have to learn. Um, we have to collaborate and talk. Um, I think this is a really important Open Cup, um, and uh, we'll see how, it's, how it'll unfold um, ultimately. Um, but I think at the end of the year or during the year, there'll be opportunities for us all from all different parts of the ecosystem to talk through uh, what makes sense for our soccer. Um, ultimately, like I said, we've got a, a World Cup in 2026, and we've got to be going towards that. 
Yeah, I, I want to just play this real quick. This is you don't have to. <laughs> 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 but, but I would love to get your reaction because look, uh, Seb is a homie's uh, a friend as well. But he's very passionate about uh, about U.S. Open Cup, and he was very. He's a little passionate about hot takes. <laughs> as much as we love Seb, I mean, and he came with the hottest, the hottest takes. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he came through with the smoke. Uh, so let's listen to him. Well, you know what? Maybe they shouldn't be playing soccer. MLS Next Pro has seen eight of its 11 teams already eliminated from the U.S. Open Cup. Four of those teams eliminated at the hands of amateurs. Amateurs. That's what the U.S. Open Cup needed. MLS Next Pro. Got it. Okay. So, look. Sebi is is really. Uh, He's also saying it in a way for effect, right? Uh, sure, sure. But there, there's, uh, but you were mentioning about the 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 passion uh, from fans, positive or negative. And look, and, and, and here's a negative. And, and anytime <laughs> there's change, anytime, and look, I'll be honest. This is what probably before the uh, U.S. Open Cup started, I lean more towards what Seb is saying, where it's almost like a um, why why change this. Nothing was wrong with On this. On the show, we also said, like, senior teams could just play their more young players if they didn't want to send the full squad. Sure, sure. There were other ways. So th there's and been, then, we've kind of and, but then been after, moving around. After watching some of the MLS Next Pro teams, and then obviously there's much more bias on my part because I'm watching uh, NYCFC uh, CFC 2 play, and I'm, like, happy for them and proud of them. And, you know, I've been a season ticket holder since uh, the, day, the one. day one. And so seeing this particular team do well and get this opportunity, I'm like, Wow, this is incredibly meaningful. They would not have had this opportunity to have these Did moments. Did you see him celebrate too after the? A hundred percent. It, it, mean, it means a lot thing. to them. It yeah. means, it means so much to them. So, so I have to uh, uh, see that and say like, okay, maybe it wasn't all bad. The decision, and this is not to to just give a, a license to MLS to be like that. I'm supporting it a hundred percent, but but. To, There's a silver lining yeah, to, to what you thought maybe wasn't the know, best decision. I've gone to uh, NYCFC training. I've seen uh, uh, you know some of these uh, young players play, and it's like so. There's a little bit of pride in seeing them do well, especially against tough competition, U USL competition. So that that's kind of what um, I, the fact that we're having this debate at all to me shows that. People care about American soccer to such a higher degree than even 10, 15 years ago that they're they're willing to be mad at MLS Next Pro and 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 at, are mad at the at the poor results uh, of the teams. And I think that's a, a, a fair criticism and fair judgment because it's like if you're gonna play these teams, then we want them to do better. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I no, agree. Uh, no, I mean, I, I, like I said, uh, you know, I think that I, I watched that take um, when it when it came out. Um, you know, my reaction was 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 measured. Uh, you know, you like, deleted like, the tweet. Like, you, know, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I screenshot. The, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, I listen. I think that um, it's a good thing that people have, uh, like I said, passion, um, have a feeling towards. You know, I, I think that there's opportunities. To look at this competition and and evolve it, you know, uh, you know, uh, where we are today may not be where where this thing nets out, you know. At the end of the day, um, it's important that I think fans are excited about the competition. You know, it makes sense. I think it's important that folks um, like Sebastian and folks that are you know part of the sport um, are excited about the competition. But I think that there's an opportunity to evolve it. And like you said, you know, I think it it means something to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and especially those players. If, I mean, like, I don't, I don't know who, how many people saw that game, or at least just look at the end of the game. And those, those players uh, and ICFC too were. Um, you knew it meant meant something to them, which was really cool. And it meant something to me when I when I lost that game in Atlanta, yeah, you yeah. know, uh, <laughs> years ago. Um, and so picking um, the rocks out of your boots. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. it, you know, it's you know those things. Um, it's a great tournament. You got an opportunity to win a trophy. You know, I think. So, um, you know, one of the first things, like, I think when I, when I first turned pro, I had a player that, was, that had played on the team in, was it 99, Rochester Rhinos. And so I had a player. A was that the last, today. the last that was the last time team, that yeah. a non-MLS team won. Yeah, yeah. A player by the name of Craig Demon, Unbelievable guy. Great, great player. Um, you know, he talked about, you know, winning that, um, that tournament, you know. Um, so um, it's, a, it's a great tournament. I, and, you know, the timing of everything, it was, it was you know, um, you know, 
there's a conversation there, you know, in terms of when things evolved and were made public or when things were, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that this there's an opportunity. It's a it's a great tournament. There's no yeah, yeah. there is no what I would say is through the positives and the negatives. There is no debate that this is a great tournament um, or at least with a tremendous amount of history. But there's opportunity. You, it just you know, I've been to a number of open cup finals i've been to open cup uh round games i've played in them i've been had clubs that have been part of them whether that's at you know as a gm or whether that's as a league office executive you know there's there's call it there's opportunity yeah uh, it's you been know? 25 so, years since a yeah. non-mls team won you think non-mls teams be like good get them out of here bro <laughs> <laughs> i want it's, a trophy it's, it's fair i i think your perspective is is more valid than uh, i think a lot of fans are willing to sort of accept even even and I speak uh, you know for myself when I say that uh, as well but you know I interviewed uh, CJ Sapong a couple months ago and asked him about kind of the debate about o o open cup and asked him as a player do you not want to be playing in the open cup and it was interesting the uh, indifference is probably the best yeah. word I could use where, where it's not he wasn't like no I don't want to play in it and he, he wasn't like yo I'm excited to play in it and, and it's another opportunity for me to showcase my it wasn't that it was just like yo it's my job. I'll play where they need me to play, and if they don't want me to play there, then I kind of won't play there. That's kind of what I uh, which is what uh, more did you ask of a player? Right? Exactly. So it's it, I think it's a thing from even the player side as well that they also probably see it as an opportunity of like this tournament should be bigger, and and I I want to be more excited to play in it and stuff like that. Which is you can't really like what I think of like the FA Cup. They just uh, announced today that they're not doing FA Cup replays. Replays after the, and, the third and round. And people are really upset because why change this thing that we've always done? And and there, there's something and there's an emotional connection to these tournaments that people have a very difficult time uh, changing. And then, you know, even, even as the a funny thing is why you see it as positive and why some people see it as negative is really for the same thing, which is wanting the country to develop better, younger players or at a faster rate, or to catch up with other nations. The same way why it's good for MLS Next Pro and why a lot of fans of maybe smaller clubs or lower league clubs think maybe this is a bad thing for them because the revenue will shift. So it's funny how we all want the same thing. Yeah. I guess my question for you is, you've we asked you this last time, I'll ask you again, where do you think we are in, in developing players in this point of your your career in the sport of soccer? Are we further ahead than you thought we would be? Are we still lacking in certain areas? What is one thing, if you were the czar of soccer of the U.S., that you would change to, to, to make it even better? I think we're... Um we're further ahead than we were 20 years ago or 40 years ago. I sure hope so. Um, amazing. <laughs> I mean, especially literally just even when you just think about the level of investment in the game, that alone, um, there is a positive output. Um, but there's still meat on the bone. You know, there's still a lot of opportunity to... You speak in my language. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we're still making those investments. This is season three of MLS Next Pro. Um, you know, we've had, you know, you know, the, the, the captain of the U.S. national team, Tyler, we talked about Tyler before, mm -hmm. you know, Academy, Red Bull 2, first team, you know, Ben Kramoski from Miami, you know, Academy, uh, MLS Next Pro Team, MLS, U.S. national team. So um, there's still opportunities in that space. Um, I'd like to spend more time, and I think we may talk a little bit about Next and the Academy system. I would like to look more at um, that environment and that space, um, you know, I think that there's an opportunity. I'd like to find solutions where um, uh, uh, players, um, kids from urban areas are uh, more part of our environment. I I'd like to, you know, there is a, you know, um, I have cousins and uncles and things like that and where they grew up and all those types of things, they never, you know, they weren't exposed to soccer. I was, a, you know, I'm a product of my environment. I had kids in, in the backyard that were playing soccer, and so that's why I played soccer and I didn't play other sports. Um, but um, there's an opportunity there that we need to harness. Um, you know, soccer is a thinking person sport. It's a game of skill. It's a, also a game of power, speed, and athleticism. And to the extent that we can diversify our player pool, that will only make our existing player pool that much stronger and also bring in um, other uh, kids and players that can contribute to what we're doing. When you think about the way the game, and for me, you know, the Brazilians play the, 
they play the best, the most beautiful soccer. Uh, they have a number of different type of athletes. They play it. It's in their culture. It's just it's it's a dance, um, and it's it's they they are the best in, in in my opinion, or at least over my over my lifetime. For the two of and, us that aren't a part of a committee, we don't get to see <laughs> what this is. But I think that's something that yeah. Christian and I have been very vocal about from the beginning of this show since 2015. There's not enough kids from where we're from playing this game. What, give me one reason why that still is when there's now free academies everywhere. Is it just that the the folks in charge of finding the, the talented youth players aren't looking in those places? Is there a, a lack of incentive to find it? Give me one tangible reason why this isn't more, why kids from the hood, for the lack of a better term, or kids from less lower income areas aren't more prevalent in this sport yet. In America, so, so a couple things. I think that also, like, um, it, uh, um, it's 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 happening. Um, like, even when you look at the diversity of that's what our I tell my wife about our, so, the so, IKEA furniture. I, I game. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I open the boxes. <laughs> it's in process. I, I, I don't want to dismiss. There are we have some good youth coaches, you know, that are developing some really good players. We have some good youth players that are developing into really good pros. How can we, what you talked about before, how can we have more better players at a faster rate, all those types of things? Um, it's not easy if, you know, and these, there's not one solution for the issue um, to address it. It's really important that you have five or six types of um, solutions that can kind of attack the area. Um, it costs a lot of money as well, it costs a lot of time, it costs mm -hmm. a lot of energy. And then we talked about new rules early on and how difficult that is to implement change and those types of things. No different than we talk about, you know, we're talking about education. How do you change the education system? And, you know, we, we could talk for hours about math and science and history and reading and language arts and all those types of things. And soccer is just another discipline. Um, and, you know, sports is cultural. Um, and, you know, as much as you want to create a professional environment such that players can really develop in the way that you need them to develop, well, they're in their home environment a lot more than they're in the professional environment. So how can we impact, you know, that aspect of, of, of player development in a way that, you know, we can get the players that we need? And, you know, so... Um, we, we, we'll talk to the committee now. We have to... We have to address this, you know. Like, I think I saw a, um, I saw a clip on Deion Sanders, and there was he was talking about some, you know, a kid who, you know, I think his dad was incarcerated, his mom had passed away at a young age, those types of things. Like, that is real. Like, and and and, um, you know, there and there are there are in different environments and different moments, those communities are. Um, producing some really amazing people and some really amazing um, professional athletes. And it's important that when, you know, uh, maybe not 2026, but hopefully, you know, uh, in, the, in the future that we look up at our professional teams and we look up at our national teams and we see players that are represented from all different communities. Um, and that's what it's all about. Um, and so... Uh, you know, I, I'm really um, I'm excited to be part of that work. Um, uh, hopefully, I can have some impact in that way. Um, but w you know, we we've done a lot of work on under underrepresented groups and things like that. But how can we get some of those kids involved in our game? And it's not an easy answer. We're, we're not going to solve it. Yeah. yeah. You I, know, right now. I'll say this. I mean, maybe you know, Alexis kind of po pointing out the sort of the final product of like the, the the players from from you know much more maybe challenging or difficult backgrounds making it to let's say the, the national team but I, you know I, I also think about you know a lot of people that tune into this show are like they have kids or they are spending ten thousand dollars a year to You're have their a kids dad now how do we I'm make a dad. Mateo Mbappe <laughs> <laughs> but then, how do we how do we make my son <laughs> yeah. Mbappe without me spending a hundred and twenty thousand dollars by the time he's 18. In fact how do we make a couple million off this kid <laughs> and when I say we I mean both <laughs> so that you know obviously that doesn't who knows you know we don't all have the answer to that it's a big big problem but that's that is also the thing I think about when I hear um you know players that played in in Europe and who never made it who never made it professional or they they trialed and and were at an academy they never say oh my parents spent 
thirty, forty thousand dollars. Uh, you know, by the time I was like 14, 15 years old to, to play on these travel teams and all this other stuff, they're like, no, we didn't pay. Or my, or my mom paid for, uh, you know, a $20, 20 pound fee or whatever like that. Like that's the, to me, that's when we've made it in American soccer where the parents are not having so much money siphoned from them to possibly play the lottery and get their kid to, to make it to the national and team. And the sport becomes a reprieve from... The, some of the troubles that happened in those neighborhoods, like when I was young and when Chris was run, young growing up in Sunset Park and I grew up in Newark, you know, playing sports, all jokes aside, playing basketball, playing baseball, playing soccer for me was a time away from maybe a home that wasn't that comfortable to be in 24-7 or not. it was a chance to not do what's happening in the streets with some of my other friends that I saw them getting in trouble. So the sport can become a reprieve as opposed to maybe another burden laid on the parent. You know what I mean? No doubt. Um, so couple things I also want to we're having this 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 conversation I, I I have a tremendous amount of respect for all the youth coaches and all the players that have really dedicated themselves to excellence you know and so uh, you know we're talking about how do we you know address potential uh, opportunities won't even call won't call them issues but really opportunities and things like that but there's still a tremendous amount of investment thought and work and energy that has already been put into that and and it's we true. talked a little about next and next pro and mls and things like that there's other leagues out there there's other you know um and those are good things in terms of you know i think you didn't say it but pay to play and those yeah. you know um that is a complicated issue and it is um economic it's cultural there's a, just a lot of layers to that um which we need to really peel back um you know i've been thinking about it a lot um it's not straightforward. Also, like when you think about, I was thinking about it one time through the lens of just, um, um, you know, I, I, I've never had a, um, I never, I, you know, I grew up playing soccer all my life and pro and all these other, all these other things. I've never had a black coach, um, head coach as, as, and, and then when Another I think about, mm -hmm. you know, but, but also when I think about like pay to play and, you know, you want to be able to attract you know, um, coaches from all different communities and all different backgrounds. If it's a volunteer role, do I get a certain um, coach from a particular community? Can that can that can that person can that young person um, afford to take on the position of coach and still be able to pay the rent or the mortgage or you know whatever it is or the car payment? And so, I w what I would say is, you know, at the end of the day. It's important that we are cognizant that we create an environment and a structure that is inclusive, that where we can uh, bring folks from underrepresented groups as coaches, as as players, and that's not always happening. That's not happening right now. And so, I, I what I would say is, yes, does the pay-to-play model and all those types of things have to be addressed? Absolutely, but it's not so. It like. You know, when people are like, hey, this is the this is whenever someone says this is the problem, I'm like, ah, when you know, it's not there's not one problem. There uh -huh. are it, there are layers. To Other this things thing. shift. Yeah. And so yeah. we really it's not going in with a hammer. It's a scalpel. And it's really trying to to really dissect, you know, what we can do and how we can we can improve. And it's not going to happen overnight. That's but we can point. attack it. OK, I uh, got an idea. Burrito shops. <laughs> 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 so. Man, you keep talking about me. <laughs> I gotta be honest, it's on my mind. <laughs> All right, we got we got on much longer than we expected, but I just really want to get to this question, and then we'll wrap up here. It's a, obviously it's thank a, you to Gully Squad, our yeah, Patreon. yeah. We get to ask questions of our guests. Uh, 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 Patreon.com slash Soccer Cooligans. But, but this was a great question from Claude Copeland Jr. and, and asking about uh, what uh, are Ali's thoughts about what happened at the generated Generation Adidas tournament, uh, um, and how will such actions be handled in the future? So if uh, people are not aware, there, there was a video of, a, of a, a scuffle between the Philadelphia Union Academy players and a Brazilian team. I think it was Fluminense, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember which one. Um, this is a generation of leaders. A generation yeah. of leaders, right? So um, there was a, a, a Brazilian team invited, and there was accusations of uh, uh, racism. This also, I believe Red Bull Academy had another issue as well. I don't know all the details, so apologies if I'm kind of getting some of this wrong. But when you, especially when it's involving children and you hear anything, about any kind of racial slur or anything, uh, racism being involved, it's obvious.
obviously something disgusting you don't want to see in the game at, at the professional level Absolutely. and definitely not uh, amongst children but um just the yeah, uh, sorry just a uh, clause question is basically just about uh, uh you know what what happened and and how do you think this should be handled yeah i i i appreciate the question um it's important um a couple things as i you know about that um ga cup is is First is an amazing tournament. I was down there for a couple of days, um, and and I've been to a lot of youth tournaments around the world. It is not just the GA Cup is not just it's it's it is not just a great tournament, but it's the best tournament in the U.S. It's the best tournament in North America. And it's probably the, the best youth tournament in in, in the world. Um, when you think about the way it's organized, the quality and level of competition, the um, engagement from from sponsors, particularly a major sponsor like like Adidas, um, it's an amazing youth tournament, and there were some amazing games, some amazing moments, um, and that was, um, you know, those those moments. Um, um, we've got to find solutions to. We've got to, you know, we're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna eradicate racism and discrimination, um, but there are opportunities. We, we've got to find ways to be better in those. Um, how we can respond? How can we be proactive? Um, how can we find solutions, engage, you know, clubs and, and, and players and parents uh, in a proactive way to reduce those types of moments? Um, it's di- that was, those, you know, those clips are difficult to see. I'm a parent. Um, you know, I've got, a, you know, my son turned 14. <laughs> you know, I've got a son, you know, I've got a daughter that's 10. Those are difficult moments to see that have to be addressed. Um, they are being addressed um, you know, we've done a lot of work over the last couple of years. Primarily, most of it has been um, at the first team level at MLS, and then also in MLS Next Pro. Um, we've 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 ad- we've started to address a lot of those types of things in uh, in MLS Next, and some of the clubs are are are, are doing those types of things uh, on their own. So there's good things in that regard. But those are like what I would say is like. Um, you know, it's going to be a process, but we're addressing it. Those are difficult moments to see. I mean, I, you know, I was talking to somebody about a couple of things the other day. Like, you know, I, I, I've, I've been on the soccer field. We've all been on the soccer field or in a difficult, you know, in, in a game, and someone says something to you and how that makes you feel and how it affects you, um, you know, not just in that moment but over a lifetime. You know, I know the first time that someone called me the N-word, I know where I was. I know who that got, who that, who that was. I know what my response was, um, and I was in third grade, you know, Jeez. and so, you know, I'm a middle-aged man now, and so, you know, and, and so do we take it serious? Absolutely. Um, how can we address it? A variety of different ways. Um, are we going to completely um, eradicate racism and discrimination and those types of things? No, but we have to have an environment that is inclusive, that is safe, um, and you know, the, the, you know, so so um, more to come. Yeah. Okay. Well, no. Well put, uh, well put. Uh, Ali. This has been. Uh, I know we went a little long. One of my favorite guests. This is just the, uh, the, the best. I know this. We have. Uh, we had some jokes. We had some burritos. Mm-hmm. We had. Uh, <laughs> some, Did we? <laughs> Did I miss it? Some seriousness. Uh, but uh, we're gonna start our own committee. I think that's what we figured out. <laughs> <laughs> cool, and, and maybe Ali's not allowed in there <laughs> until I'm allowed in the other. The one. Cooligans Rules Committee is gonna be interesting. <laughs> uh, but you are nothing short of absolutely insightful uh, and engaging, and we really appreciate you. Uh, coming by and taking the time to chat with us. Feelings mutual. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Ali Curtis, everybody.